I am Dr. Robert Kuski, and I'd like to give you a short introduction to brachytherapy and the different techniques we have at our disposal in treating breast cancer. Brachytherapy comes from the Greek root brachy, which means short. So the brachysaurus is the dinosaur with the short front arms, and brachytherapy means treatment from a short distance. By that we mean putting radioactive pellets inside the breast up against where the cancer used to be. And we know from many other cancers, whenever we put radioactive seeds up against where the tumor used to be, the chance of a recurrence is very, very low. So the source that we use is very, very small. It is the size of pencil lead, and it's thin enough to go into some of the smallest catheters that you can imagine. The radioactive source is at the end, and it's about three millimeters long by about a half a millimeter thick, and it's on a cable with a robot running the cable from a safe into the catheter to deliver radiation from the inside out. So we don't have the actual machine here today, but this is what the cable looks like, and this is what the radioactive source looks like that would be going inside the catheters. Now, the first form of brachytherapy that I used in the treatment of breast cancer is called interstitial multi-catheter brachytherapy. Interstitial means inside the tissues, rather than being inside the cavity, which other devices do. And for the interstitial brachytherapy, we start with a catheter that's not dissimilar to IV catheters that you might have in your arm for intravenous fluids, for hydration. This is so thin that it can go inside the breast painlessly using local anesthetic. So we pride ourselves on the procedures being pain-free and blood-free. Yet, there's an open end on the end for so, so that the radioactive source travels from the robot inside this catheter and dwells inside the breast long enough to give the dose that I prescribe. So the dose might start here, then move to here, and move to here until it gets to the end of the part of the breast we want to treat then it retracts back into the safe, then it goes to catheter number two and marches through that catheter long enough to give the dose that I prescribe, then to catheter number three, and so on. Interstitial brachytherapy, the oldest, the most tested, the most tried and true form of brachytherapy. Now you might ask, do I have to get these catheters put in every day? And the answer is no, you do not. We use carriers in the breast that stay in the breast for one week and are slightly larger than the treatment catheter, but they're also hollow. So every day when you're done with your treatment, all you will have is a button on one end of your skin and a button on the other end of the skin without a big device sticking out of your breast. This stays in. So then when you come in, the thin catheter is inserted inside the stay-at-home catheter and this end gets connected to the robot. So the radioactive source will march within a catheter within the catheter. So this is how interstitial these are, is delivered, and this is called a comfort catheter. Then when, once your treatment is done, whoops, this comes out, and all you have is buttons on your skin. Very fancy way to deliver radiation from the inside out. And one of the beauties of the interstitial brachytherapy is because it doesn't rely on the surgical cavity, it's actually in the tissues of the breast, we could treat very unusual shaped cavities, such as one in the shape of a U, we could treat with this, but it would be very difficult to treat with some of the other devices that I'm going to explain in just a minute. So. The interstitial brachytherapy takes great skill to do. Uh, there's only um, a limited number of doctors around the world that have the skill to do it. So I wanted to simplify the technique so a doctor in Peoria, Illinois could do breast brachytherapy. So um, a, a company and I developed the first balloon catheter called Mamocyte. 
Mamocyte was FDA approved in 2002 and has now been placed in tens of thousands of women. And the beauty is, is it's a single hole, a little bigger hole than the interstitial, but one hole, and it goes inside the breast right into the lumpectomy cavity. Then on with this port here, we can inject water into the balloon to blow it up to it's approximately one and a half inches in diameter. The water in the balloon is surrounding a central shaft, which I hope that you can see here. And this is the shaft that the radiation source goes down, sits at the center of the balloon, radiates out in 360 degree di dimensions, delivering radiation from the inside out, but with a single catheter that can even be put in by a surgeon. The radiation source goes through this end and travels inside the balloon. Well, the problem with this balloon is it didn't fit all patients and we had trouble controlling the skin dose and we had trouble controlling the rib dose. So we needed an improvement on the mammocyte catheter. So mammocyte has come up with another catheter. This device is called the mammocyte multi-lumen, which we just call the mammocyte ML. The mammocyte ML is also a balloon catheter filled with filling the balloon with water. But the difference here is that it has three offset catheters on the inside, just flanking that central shaft that you saw in the original mammocyte, and allows me to pull the dose away from the skin, pull it up off the ribs if necessary. It gives us more ability to sculpt the radiation dose cloud. Single entry, one hole in the breast, it goes inside the cavity, so we call it a single entry intracavitary device, mammocyte ML. Now the next device I'm going to show you is from a company called Cenorex, and the name of this device is called a Contura Balloon, C-O-N-T-U-R-A. And it has a lot of similarities to the other balloon catheters, but as we go to the balloon itself, it's easier to see the yellow offset catheters, and they're a little more separated from the central shaft than the mammocyte ML, giving me the ability, once again, to pull dose away from the skin, pull it off the ribs, and have the simplicity of a single entry intracavitary device. This is the Contura. The radiation enters through these red shafts here with our, that same robot that I talked about before, sending a radioactive source inside the balloon, which would be inside your breast. From here out, this portion of the catheter would be sticking outside the skin, but our nurses are superb in bandaging this so it's very comfortable for you, even though you have this part of the catheter sticking out of your breast. The next device I'm going to talk about is something completely different. This is called the Savvy device, short for Strut Adjustable Volume Implant. We just call it Savvy. The beauty of the Savvy is that it goes in like a pencil, so it's also a single entry device through one slit, maybe a quarter of an inch in the breast, gets tunneled in, into the breast under local anesthetic into the cavity. Once this is centered, Inside the lumpectomy cavity, I simply turn the screw on this end and it opens up and it looks like an egg whisk. So if it doesn't work for curing the cancer, we can always use it to stir our eggs. But the beauty of the Savvy is that you have multiple struts that are right up against the edge of the lumpectomy cavity. So if this strut here is up against the skin, we simply don't load it at all or load it very lightly with radiation. If this one back here is up against a rib, we can control the dose to the rib, again, sculpting that dose cloud. From this white washer backwards, this will be sticking out of your breast. And once again, our wonderful nurses will bandage that and make it as comfortable for you as possible. After the 10th treatment, on the fifth day, 
I simply unscrew the device and it collapses. And once it w again looks like a pencil, it's very streamlined, doesn't catch anything as it comes out, it simply glides out of the breast, relatively pain-free to remove. So this is the Savvy, um, something that we love having in our tool chest to take care of women with breast cancer, another single entry intracavitary device. We also sometimes employ external beam focused radiation on the lumpectomy cavity, which means that there's no pokes in the breast, no catheters in the breast. This has some disadvantages in that it has to go through the skin to get to the lumpectomy cavity rather than the radiation from the inside out, which is the beauty of brachytherapy. But in some women who are particularly afraid of catheters, it's a nice option to be able to give a five-day treatment with external beam. Being quite frank, we really prefer the brachytherapy technique whenever possible. It gives the ultimate conformal radiation delivery puts radiation in where it's needed, and avoids radiation to the tissues that do not need radiation therapy.